that, I want to say thank you for participating on our forum, and I'm going to turn it over to you. We appreciate being here, and I always get surprised whenever uh, it's, that's a that's a generous introduction, and I'm happy that everybody knows that I was on the track team, God, like <laughs> eight years ago now in, in, in college. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate being here. Uh, I'm from a company, um, like Carol said, uh, called Mark 43. We make uh, cloud-based, and, and we can talk more about that if anybody has questions, but cloud-based, effectively internet-based, um, computer-aided dispatch software, records management software, and property evidence and analytics software. Um, we want to talk about some of the things that we have observed in uh, law enforcement agencies and what they're struggling with during the COVID-19 uh, crisis. We don't want to come at this uh, as as like a pure vendor. We are not here to um, you know hawk a product that we are trying to you know sell. We are going to talk a little bit about a solution that we've put together. Um, but the point in us talking about that solution is more illustrating the things that agencies may not be thinking about right now, or problems that agencies may be struggling with, or information that they're not collecting, um, and even as an extension of that what agencies are struggling with right now, but what we think they may be struggling with in kind of the medium term and the long term. So if anything, uh, in the next 25 minutes, we hope that the agencies that are listening right now can, instead of planning for their next week or their next month, we can hopefully help them see around the corner and figure out what's gonna be happening in re regards to COVID-19 the next um, two months, three months, year, maybe even a couple years. So uh, that's, that's kind of how we wanna approach it. So. Um, before we get into actually talking about that, I just want to give a brief background on Mark 43. I think it'll ground how um, we went about trying to figure out what kind of issues police agencies and, and law enforcement agencies at large um, uh, were, were facing. And then at the same time, I think it'll kind of illustrate how we arrived at a solution, and then maybe it'll even inform the Q&A at the end of this. Um, speaking of Q&A, there will be a couple poll questions that we send out over the course of this. Uh, for anybody that's that's on right now, we'd love to get your kind of real-time reaction to some of the things that, that we're talking about and dealing with. And I think it'll make the conversation a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more interactive. So um, just a quick background on Mark 43, who we are, kind of where we came from. Um, myself, my two co-founders back in the spring of 2012, we were engineers at Harvard College, and we were very fortunate to be tasked with working with the Massachusetts State Police to solve some of their information collection needs uh, that they were uh, working through in, in the state of Massachusetts. Before that, they had rolled out this new policing model. They were trying to figure out how to, how to fight domestic uh, gang members and actually combat that problem um, using some techniques they had picked up overseas while serving in the military, uh, kind of combating insurgents. And they said, oh, domestic violent gang members behave very similarly uh, in some ways to the way that insurgents behave overseas, we're going to route this policing model. Is it effective or is it not effective? Our job was to actually measure it, tell them whether their uh, policing model is effective or not effective. We realized that the data that we needed and the information that we wanted to collect and the things that we needed from them to actually do that analysis just didn't really exist. You know, we love to see on CSI and any movie and all that crazy Hollywood stuff that police and, and law enforcement and um, just broad first responder technology is like the most amazing thing. Um, that's not really the case. It's, you know, it's, it's not as modern as we, as we hoped it was. And our professor let us run off in our direction to uh, just kind of help them out somehow, some way and build them something that could give them um, a little bit of, of a better day to day in terms of collecting the information that was so important in forming all of their operations. So um, eight years later, we have a company that we had started to actually address those needs. So we build records management uh, systems and we build computer-aided dispatch systems for any type of law enforcement that exists, uh, not only in the US now, but actually internationally. And we do it all in the cloud. We do it all internet-based. And um, for that particular reason, it makes it easy for us to roll out things to agencies in a really quick and kind of low lift way. And when we actually talk about the solution that we came up with, um, it means that instead of us having come to your agency and install a server uh, in your basement to actually push out some sort of application to everybody on the force, we instead are able to roll it out from behind our computers in New York or Charlotte or wherever uh, our, our engineers are and get you live in roughly seven business days. So um, lots of benefits in, in terms of being a, a cloud-based company. We can talk more about that. Um, but again, I want to talk especially about some of the problems that we've seen agencies facing in the uh, face of COVID-19 
how they have been responding. Kelly uh, is my executive producer and she's gonna flip over um, to the presentation right now. And this, these slides are gonna kind of guide our conversation. Um, so Kelly, if you want to move into the first slide, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our research process. This is a research process that us, us as a company go through uh, in any product that we put together, any feature that we put together. And I think it's a pretty reasonable expectation for anybody that is working with a technology vendor that expects a technology vendor uh, to solve their problems. And the process really amounts to having conversations with law enforcement experts and practitioners in the field to understand the problems that we're going through. But before I even spoil uh, kind of how we went through this process and, and, and the things that we learned, um, Carol, if you wanna push out question one to the participants, um, we just wanna get a sense of the people that are on the call right now, what are the most important things uh, that your agency may be facing or maybe thinking about uh, during the pandemic? And uh, I guess for me personally, I'm curious if it aligns with this, I'm curious if there's some overlap or I'm curious if um, there may be some things that are completely, completely alternative and, and things that we haven't even anticipated yet. Okay, great. So uh, here's the question. What's the most important, what's the most important thing to your agency during this pandemic? Um, so lots of people are trying, are caring about tracking exposures. Uh, really, it's, it's a pretty even split along all these things. So obviously COVID-19 is creating a lot of issues that people are focusing on. Um, planning for COVID-19 impacts in the long term. That one is really interesting to us because that was actually something that resoundingly across all the agencies that we spoke to, they are concerned about. And obviously there's a lot of things going on in, in real time in the near term that these agencies have to focus on. But we've realized that in the last two or three months that COVID-19 is going to be echoing for a year, for two years, for five years. And in, in, in some cases, I think 10 and 20 years, I think COVID-19 is going to be something that will have impacted how law enforcement is done in the U.S., if not around the world. So um, those are all really apt responses, and I appreciate you all participating. So. Um, here's, here's what Mark 43 has observed and here's the kind of process we've gone through to uh, understand what law enforcement agencies are dealing with in the face of COVID-19. So one, uh, as a result of the current pandemic, first responders have been exposed to COVID-19, have become infected, self-quarantined, hospitalized, and in some cases, unfortunately, um, have passed away uh, very much in, in, in a line of duty capacity from contracting COVID-19 and ultimately succumbing to it, which is... Uh, a sad, um, you know, absolutely devastating thing, but it's a reality of the world that law enforcement is. And unlike, gosh, you know, even me, I have the luxury of being able to sit behind my computer and, and talk to you guys from the safety of my New York apartment. Um, being a law enforcement uh, uh, participant, you know, being somebody in the law enforcement field, it means that you have to continue doing your day job. You don't get the um, convenience of working from home. You have to go out on the front lines and actually deal with, you know, your your job and your mission and your charge in the same way that you'd have to, whether there was COVID nineteen or there wasn't COVID nineteen. And we have the utmost respect for that. We wanted to understand what that meant for agencies, so um, we started doing some informational interviews with agencies that we work with to understand. What are their concerns? And the concerns, to say the least, were really wide ranging, but there were some themes that we kind of sussed out as we actually went through these interviews. So the first obvious one was that as law enforcement personnel were getting exposed to COVID-19 or there are cases of potential transmission, there was no consistent way to actually collect that information. There was no consistent way that agencies were documenting that information and um, doing anything with the data that they were collecting. There were some agencies that were collecting things on paper-based reports, which is just a complete, um, uh, complete stand-in for this industry. I mean, you know, paper-based reporting is still a very, very common thing, so we weren't surprised to see that. Some agencies were collecting things on Google surveys or Google Sheets. Some agencies were using SharePoint. Some agencies were using other kind of custom-rolled ways uh, that their IT departments had put together to actually collect this information, but there wasn't a consistent way. And because there wasn't a consistent way, there wasn't a set of best practices that these agencies could talk about and share. And we're hoping that we can actually surface some of those as we work through the rest of uh, these six or seven slides today. Um, in concert with collecting that information or lack thereof, not collecting that information, all this important data that these agencies may have been collecting in the field and the first responders may have been collecting in the field, 
wasn't being surfaced to any of the command staff that wanted to do anything with this information. They couldn't make any personnel decisions or operational high level agency decisions without this information. So they were just kind of left guessing and, and using their gut. And while often command staff gut um, approaches are, are the results of years of tons of training and you know 25 or 30 years of being in the field, um, there's often no real substitute for data. And we've only learned that evidence-based uh, law enforcement is becoming a much more um, kind of in vogue thing right now because I think it, it really works and it's really compelling. So um, they need that data, they need that data to make the best decisions. Overall, um, we found that these agencies, again, just weren't collecting really key data points, um, like when somebody's exposed to COVID-19. As soon as somebody's exposed potentially to COVID-19, you have to know who they work for, who, who they work with uh, the rest of the day, um, what vehicles they shared with other people and a host of other things. This is all information that's like table stakes, but agencies maybe just didn't um, have that information that they were hoping to collect. Secondly, uh, absences related to COVID-19. This is what allows law enforcement agencies to kind of see around that corner and understand, okay, am I going to be getting 10 team members back in the next week or am I going to be losing 100 team members in the next week? Or am I going to have, in the case of, you know, like Detroit or NYPD, who have just absolutely been um, ravaged by COVID-19. I mean, they have thousands of officers, uh, or excuse me, just you know, law, again, law enforcement personnel at large um, that have been quarantined and aren't available to actually staff up the agency. So um, understanding when team members are coming back is a really important thing. Uh, being able to kind of slice and dice that across units is really important. Understanding that um, my patrol may be really depressed in terms of personnel numbers or my investigators may be really depressed in terms of personnel numbers. That's all information that command staff needs to know about. Um, command staff also needs to know about changes to an exposed person's status. So if their status is worsening, if their status uh, go, you know, that, that they have to get hospitalized or their doctors requiring them to be out of work for a month or two, those are all things that the agency needs and, and it's, it's a horrible situation, but if one of those members passes away, the agency needs to know that for a lot of different reasons. The family needs to know about that and they need all that information collected regarding those things. Finally, we learned that um, the anticipated return to work timeline for affected personnel was murky, it was great, it was unpredictable. And even when those timelines were very objective and they knew that somebody was going to do a precautionary 14 day quarantine and then return to work, that information wasn't always readily available. So a lot of things that we've kind of learned across agencies that they may not have been documenting. Some agencies, again, have kind of have, have rolled their own solutions, but by and large, information that what just wasn't being uh, collected. Kelly, slide. So um, we kind of, as, as a company and as technology practitioners and uh, as a bunch of product managers, designers, and engineers that want to build really good solutions for uh, the law enforcement personnel that we work with, that was our first step, these informational interviews. The second thing is that we wanted to bucket the problems into three different segments. So um, first, during the crisis, near term, what are the things that agencies care about? What are they really um, focused on? And what could we possibly provide some sort of solution uh, to actually make the day-to-day -day for these agencies um, a little bit better and a little bit easier? So um, by and large, we saw that departments and, and just and agencies at large um, they need access to data in real time so they can make informed decisions related to, again, public safety, officer safety, um, resource allocation, how personnel is ultimately being allocated across an agency to make sure that uh, the agency is making the most use of the resources they have and doing the most public good they possibly can. Secondly, um, immediately after the crisis, so this is kind of like the medium term, once COVID-19 calms down and we get into a state of of semi-normalcy, or at least we understand what the new norm is. Um, how can agencies that either had to step up because of COVID-19 or because uh, they needed to burn more PPE or any of these things, these resources, you know, overtime especially, that they're consuming, how can they make sure they're going to state and federal uh, agencies, disaster relief agencies like FEMA, to make sure that they can get applicable reimbursement, right? These agencies shouldn't have to shoulder a ton of the uh, bill that just comes with having to support the public during times of need and during times of a pandemic like this, they should be eligible for that um, 
reimbursement at the, when, when all of this kind of calms down. So making sure that they have the information and in kind of real time collecting all of this information uh, to make sure that they get what they are due when all of this calms down. Finally, uh, and I'm actually happy that we're talking about this because it's something that part, uh, the participants on the call voted on when it came to what are you trying to think about when it comes to COVID-19 as an agency. You care about the long-term impacts to your agency and the long-term uh, changes that are gonna be made to the agency because COVID-19 is very much going to be a reality for a long time. And again, that's why we tried to put together a solution that will, will stick around for a long time because COVID-19 is not gonna be something that is going to go away at the end of May or the end of June. This is gonna be something that's gonna be a reality for a long time. So what we have frankly seen in the long term and, and what agencies are anticipating is that COVID-19 is going to kind of echo in the same way that, shot gosh, two decades ago, 9-11 um, is still echoing for first responders. So first responders responded to ground zero and the Pentagon and uh, all of these other places that were simultaneously hit on September 11th. And they didn't have much regard for, um, honestly, some of the personal protective equipment they were wearing. They were there to do their job. They were there to save people and help people and be the first responder that, that they wanted to be and they cared about being. Um, and again, documentation was not the thing that they really cared about as much um, at that time. 20 years later, we realized that a lot of these first responders that have uh, that spent a lot of time inhaling asbestos or pulverized concrete or all these other things are either developing respiratory conditions or are succumbing to respiratory conditions. And it's really hard for them or their families to get the benefits that, that they're due. Um, we anticipate a similar thing happening with COVID-19. We don't really know how COVID-19 is going to impact the uh, healthcare stance and, and ultimate um, mortality and morbidity of the United States and the, and, and the world at large. But we expect that in five years or in 10 years or in 20 years, there are going to be health conditions that can be attributed back to somebody contracting COVID-19 on the job. And we've already seen a couple line of duty deaths from COVID-19 in the law enforcement world. And it's unclear how those agencies or those officers or first responders or their families are going to be compensated or provided benefits, um, even though it is being considered a line of duty death. So the best thing an agency can do is collect information in real time at the time of potential occurrence or transmission or exposure. So they have that information in a year, in five years, or in 10 years, or in 20 years. That's the most important thing they can do. Um, if an agency is collecting that information right now, they're investing in themselves for a year down the road, five years down the road, or 10 years down the road. Um, so before we go to the next slide, Carol, if you wanna push out the next question, uh, it's, it's around how are you tracking exposure information right now? Would love to get information back. Um, from anybody that's participating on the call. I'll give it a 30 second uh, window for people to, to get back. And then we'll continue with, with some of the, the findings that we surfaced and, and how we tried to address them. Okay, well, um, I guess I, I kind of mentioned it early in the call, but Google Forms and paper records, two very typical ways that agencies are collecting this information. And again, uh, I've, I've heard, I heard in a movie that, um, blanking on the movie, I think end of watch, uh, reports are the red blood cell of a, of a uh, law enforcement agency. And we understand that reporting, people consider it a necessary evil, but, um, it's something that's just part of law enforcement. You have to document the things that happen. You have to document the things that, that go on. And, and sometimes it's hard to shake uh, doing it the old fashioned way and writing it down because that's you know, a reliable way in a lot of different ways. So um, we're not surprised to see that. But again, we think that there's a lot of solutions out there that agencies should be considering to um, make sure that they're investing in themselves and, and preparing for um, what COVID-19 is gonna mean in, in the medium and long term. Okay, so Kelly, if you wanna flip to the next slide, please. Um, I want to touch on uh, the things that Mark 43 has, has put together in order to address some of the things um, that, that I've spoken about. Um, 
and I don't want, want to make it seem like Mark 43 is the uh, only one in the world that, that is putting stuff out that I think can, can satisfy these needs that I talked about, um, although I think we moved pretty quickly to actually come up with a bespoke solution to really address um, what, we're, what we're about and, and, and what we've observed. Um, and I think it's you know, hopefully something that's gonna be compelling to, to people that, that are aware of it. So um, we heard these uh, themes from these interviews that we did and we kind of bucketed these things and sort of these real problem statements that our product managers could actually consume. Um, and we said, let's just use our capabilities in actually writing uh, law enforcement reports and uh, just first responder reports and collecting that information and let's actually modify some of that functionality to come up with the Mark 43 pandemic preparedness package to actually collect COVID-19 exposure information in the field. The thing that I wanna make really clear, first of all, um, in, in this offering that we put together, is that uh, we are just blanket donating this to any agency in the US that is interested in using it for 12 months. So um, no cost for 12 months, we do all the hard work of getting you live. Again, we get you live in five to 10 business days. It's a really quick thing. It's not like an, uh, an IT transformation project. Um, we wanted to make this a very lightweight thing for any agency that was interested. There's no obligation to stay on after 12 months. There's no, there's no catch. There's no strings attached. You get to use a free product to capture this information. And again, we just thought 12 months was an appropriate period for um, how long agencies are, are going to be um, interested in this. So um, first of all, you know, Mark 43 is not looking to make money off of this thing. This is something we're just trying to put together to help agencies that we have the good fortune of um, either working with right now, or again, for any agency that's not working with Mark 43 right now, this is 100% available to you. Second, um, we've, we've captured these three reports, which I'm going to go through um, briefly. Uh, these potential exposure reports, capturing any time there is a potential transmission in the field for any law enforcement officer uh, for personnel. Second, um, an exposure status update report. So if somebody's condition worsens or improves, we can collect that information and ultimately make sure it's reflected in this third bullet, the COVID-19 potential exposure dashboard. So this makes sure that all of the good information that uh, first responders are collecting in the field is actually surfaced and kind of um, uh, sorted and provided to command staff. So command staff can continue making informed, objective decisions about how they wanna deploy their resources, deploy their personnel in the field. So um, again, we put this together so we address a number of pandemic specific pain points for these agencies, uh, including those me uh, short, medium and long-term issues that we foresee. Um, collecting the information, making sure they can actually get reimbursement and ultimately making sure that um, benefits and benefits are go to the right people and, and the right people uh, get what they're due no matter how COVID-19 uh, uh, plays out. So, um, Kelly, you want to hit the next slide? So, first thing, potential exposure report. It's exactly uh, what it sounds like for anybody that thinks they may have been exposed in the field. They can collect the information surrounding that. They can collect any precautions or protective measures during, taken during the interaction. If they were with anybody in the field, if they had a partner, um, all of that information can be collected. And as those reports come in, the medical staff at the agency or the command staff can kind of adjudicate those and decide what needs to happen with that first responder, whether they need to go on quarantine or if it's something else uh, based on agency policy and procedure. Next report, Kelly, you want to hit the slide? Uh, next report is the exposure status update report. So if I have been exposed to COVID-19 in the field and my condition worsens and I have to go get hospitalized or my doctor says I have to be out for a month, you can supply that information and command staff can understand that, okay, uh, Matt Paliga is not going to be back to work for a month, or he's not going to be back to work for two months, or his entire unit is not going to be able to return because maybe they all had it, uh, they were all exposed for him. They're not going to be able to return for three weeks. I can use that in my workforce planning, and I can make sure that's reflected in the operational decisions that I make for my agency. And then all of this information that's being collected, Kelly, you want to hit the next slide? is being surfaced in the COVID-19 potential exposure dashboard. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a big suite of charts and maps and graphs and different readouts of all of the information that your agency is working hard to collect. So you can make sure um, that uh, you're actually making the right decisions in real time. And again, you're not going just based on gut. You're going based on objective data to make sure that you're doing the absolute best um, for uh, given, given all of the resources that you have available. I'm gonna take a quick breather to say, Carol, um, do you wanna push out the last question? Um, 
this is basically regarding how many uh, personnel in your agency you think have been impacted by COVID-19 and that uh, they've actually had to miss, miss work due to COVID-19. So I just want to get a sense of this. Um, it's going to paint a point that I want to make just for the end of the end of the uh, conversation. But um, again, I think this is this is just something that's important for for agencies to really come come to grips with. Okay, great. So um, this is actually encouraging for, uh, and if, if we have more, more um, attendees on the call, I'd be interested to see what the sample says, but it's actually encouraging that less than 10% of your agency has um, missed work due to COVID-19. Although we do see some, some votes falling into the 10 to 40% range. Um, I think one takeaway that we see with a poll like this and what we've really witnessed, just if you if you watch any news channel or if you follow PERF or the National Police Foundation, or if you're just part of a law enforcement agency and you're recognizing this, um, COVID-19 is going to be something that is a reality for a long time. It's not gonna go away and be wrapped up by May or June as much as everybody would want it to. Um, this is going to be something that's gonna be having lasting impacts on, uh, on agencies that are just continuing to achieve their law enforcement mission. So um, with, with that, this is something that Mark 43 is going to continue to offer. If anybody has any questions about it or is actually interested in it, you can just go to mark43.com and all of the information is highlighted there, whether you want a demo or any uh, uh, information, but um, you know, we encourage you to come and, and check that out. But short of that, uh, again, I just wanna really highlight those things that we talked about earlier in the presentation um, what we have heard from agencies and, and how uh, agencies should be thinking about the problems that they're going to be facing with COVID-19. Uh, again, in the near term, you're not too late to try to figure out some sort of solution to track, again, COVID-19 exposures or changes in status or what's happening with your workforce. This is going to be something that's going to be a reality for a long time. That's something we see in the near term. Medium term, uh, again, make sure you're collecting information and the data required to make sure that from FEMA or from any of these other state reimbursement agencies, you're going to get what you are due at the end of this whole thing. Um, it's, it's not a financial burden that the agencies should shoulder. They should make sure that they are getting the reimbursement that they are due. And uh, thinking about long-term planning, COVID-19, again, it's gonna be a real, uh, real reality um, for one year, three or five years, even 10 years out. So uh, make sure you're collecting the information now that you really need to care about. So you can make sure that when that eventuality does come to pass and, and uh, the situation regarding COVID-19 and, and you know, documentation for posterity and stuff does come up, um, make sure a couple years ago, you actually collect the right information. You actually have that easily accessible. So um, that's what we've seen. That's what we've observed. Uh, that was a lot of talking by me. I really appreciate um, everybody's uh, time and attention for this. If there's any questions on the call, I think we can open it up to that, but otherwise I'm gonna turn it back to Carol. Um, and again, thanks everybody for the opportunity for uh, being able to talk through some of this. Um, hopefully it was useful. Thanks, <clears throat> thanks Matt. If, the, if thanks, anybody Matt. does have a question, go ahead and just pop in. But um, I, I just wanna say on behalf of our organization and, and our members, you know, I, I think we've seen a lot, as I said, there's, there's people out there and companies out there that really are stepping up to, trying to assist first responders um, and frontline workers in a lot of these areas. So, um, you know, I guess for those uh, participants on the call, you know, it'd be great to find out if you ever want to shoot me an email and let me know what, it, what other kind of areas that would be of help, because I know that there are companies like Mark 43 that, that are probably more than willing to be a, a solution to some of these things at these times. But you obviously, your company has stepped up and, and we thank you for that and thank you for participating in this session. So um, before I end it, is there anybody on the call that has a question? Okay, well with that, I just wanna say thank you again and uh, everybody stay safe and have a great day. Thanks so much.